to tonight's session, which is with Vicky Moffat talking about the power of PR unleashed. <laughs> uh, fabulous topic. Um, so I think PR is one of those things that we think we know what it is, but we're not too sure what it is. And we're perhaps a bit afraid of it. And so uh, Vicky is going to allay all of our concerns and help us understand what it is and why you shouldn't be afraid of it. So Vicky started out her career as a lawyer. And after being made redundant, she found that she really, really enjoyed um, being the first lawyer on Twitter and um, playing around on LinkedIn and thought it was a really super interesting area and wondered whether um, there could be a job doing this kind of stuff. So she went to a PR agency and um, was there for a year. And then decided it was time to set up her own business. So um, she's had her own business now for several years, um, her own PR business, that is. And uh, she works primarily with law firms and in particular boutique firms who have one very specialist line of business. So uh, welcome, Vicky. It's really fantastic to have you here. Thank you well, for thank you. joining us. OK, great. So um, can you tell us a little bit about what PR actually is? Because people watching might not know. So can you tell us what it is and why it's important? Yes. Um, OK, so PR, in essence, is, um, well, it's, and it's very basic. It's about communications. You know, it's about communicating things uh, to people. Um, and it's about ideally influencing those people um yeah. you know in a positive way of course not in a not in a negative way um and actually the the, the cipr and um, the Charles institute of public relations um you know does have quite stringent requirements with regards to ethics um, and you know how you should conduct yourself as a as a pr practitioner especially if like me you're a chartered pr practitioner um so so yeah it's about um it's basically about harnessing um harnessing different channels to to get the message out there whatever that message is um and and yeah influencing things um, and people and that could be the news agenda it can be your colleagues it could be customers um it, it can really be what, what whatever you want or whatever you need it to be um, but yeah at it's at its basic level it's about getting communications out there and, and as i say about influencing things and so it might be a sort of uh, obvious question, really, but why do you think it's important? So if you, I mean, if you don't do it, maybe these messages will get out on their own. <laughs> what, yeah, or the wrong messages might get out on okay. their own. So um, why, why is it important then? It, I mean, if you're a woman and if you, if you work, well, if you're a person and if you work, but, but obviously yeah. for the purposes of this group, if, if you're a woman, a woman and you work, um, you know, you want people to think certain things about you. Um, I'm not suggesting you want them to think things that aren't true. But you know, if, if you are good at your if you are good at your job, um, then you know we hope, don't we, uh, in work that people realise that we're good at our jobs. But actually, sometimes I think some of us sometimes just need a little bit of help to kind of promote ourselves and just get out there. Sometimes how good and um, how good we are at our jobs. And it's not about being big headed. It's not about kind of being arrogant or any of those things it's just about getting the the truth out there and using that truth um for your for, for, for your own benefit really um mm. you know and that can look like lots of different things it can be perhaps being a little bit more confident in um in in meetings you know that's that's sounds really basic but you know there's no reason that that's not that's not PRing yourself or you know it might be things like um speaking at a conference um you know something that many many of us uh you know vastly qualified to do but sometimes just don't want to or feel that they shouldn't um yeah you know it's, it's things like that it's about um writing a blog it might be kind of getting a little bit of a brand for yourself on on twitter it might be speaking up for yourself and, and talking about things in on on twitter it can be going uh, on the news or, or speaking in trade press um it, it can be many, many different things. Um, but the, you know, for the, for the purpose of this, the reason you should do it is, you know, to, it, it will basically, at a very basic level, it can, it can help you in your career. It might yeah. help you get promoted, get paid more. Um, yeah. You know, things that you talk about a lot. Yeah. So I think, so you've touched on some things there that I think um, are really important. And, you know, I think it's a very female trait to assume that if you work really hard, and you graft 
and you don't complain that people will somehow notice how fantastic you are and want to promote you. And sometimes that strategy can pay off, but other times it can take a really long time to progress if you're taking that strategy. So, um, you know, it, so if you're one of those, oh, I'll just work really hard and hopefully people will notice, what, I guess what your message to them would be is, look, why not give this a go as well and give yourself a bit of help? because that's what yeah. other people are doing yeah yeah get, i mean give yourself a break you know if you yeah. are working really hard anyway and if you are good at your job yeah i'm not suggesting that you really do anything different in terms of your job but you you might want to think about how you can get across to your manager or you you know you, whoever it is that is is responsible for you yeah. um, and yeah. your progression yeah um, and just make sure that you are kind of part of drip feeding um your wins yeah um, or the things that you're doing particularly well or putting yourself forward think for things perhaps that you wouldn't naturally do that maybe there's somebody else in the team who oh well he, you know he always does this or he always does that yeah um and as i say it can be it can be really basic things it can be speaking up more it can be volunteering for things that you perhaps wouldn't wouldn't tend to volunteer for it can be it, it, it can yeah it can be it can be yeah. lots of different things yeah okay so I think another thing that a lot of women I come across find difficult is uh, communicating good things that they're doing because they get anxious that people will think they're showing off or people will think they're self-obsessed or narcissistic. And, you know, for a lot of women, I think that keeps them playing quite a small game. So, um, uh, so what advice would you have to somebody who accepts what you've said, but just feels a bit anxious about coming across as showing off? Okay, so well, I think the first thing you need to do is work out what what are you trying you know what are you trying to do what what yeah. is it that you are aiming for um why, why do you, I think if you're somebody who's sitting here thinking yeah maybe I do need to be on myself a little bit more I'd be thinking well what's the reason behind that what are you trying to achieve yeah and then you know once you know what that is um, and ideally put um, some some measurability around whatever it is that you're trying to achieve whether it's a pay rise or whether it's a promotion or you know, if you, if you work for yourself, maybe it's getting a new client by a certain date, those sorts of things. And then just really think, you know, what can I do actually to, to help me, to help me reach those goals? Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, it isn't, you know, screaming and shouting about how fantastic you are. It, if anything, <laughs> it's really the opposite of that, because why would you ever do that? Um, but I, I would just say to those people, you know, if, if anybody is, is thinking, you know, maybe I should do PR myself a little bit more, um, you know, just, just have a think and, and also think about what you're comfortable, what are you comfortable with, you know, yeah. maybe think of some little steps that you can take. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this is something that you advise, but um, keeping a record even of, of your mm. kind of wins, you know, the yeah. things you do really well. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything sophisticated. You don't have to no. share it with anybody. Yeah. But, you know, every day we'll, we'll, we're all learning, every day we're, we're achieving things, every week, every month, every year. You know, you might be going and getting um, a professional qualification or you might have a particularly good meeting or you know, it can be anything. But I think as a first step, if you really feel that maybe this, this whole PR thing isn't for you, um, just keeping a, a bit of a track of, of what your wins are, because then if nothing else, yeah. if well, you are trying to get a pay rise or um, a promotion, you can kind of look at this mm. yourself, which should give you confidence. But also, you know, if you, it's evidence, isn't it? It's evidence yeah. that you are as good as... Um, you, you think you yeah. are or you should yeah. think you are no no it's definitely thing, isn't it? not everybody absolutely. thinks that they are necessarily no, as good as are. absolutely and i think i do absolutely advise people i work with to have like an like a, a an email folder of positivity right because if you're having a crap day you can just have a look at nice things that people have um said to you like thanks for helping like you did a really good job but i think it's also important for things like annual performance reviews because otherwise you just forget so otherwise what happens is you have to fill in your form of what you've done and if you haven't kept a note as you've gone through the year all you can remember is what you've worked on most recently and that might not actually be your best work and you just kind of mm -hmm. can't remember and when you're in these situations you think i'm never going to forget this i'm never going to forget that this went really well but the reality is you do forget so everybody kind of moves on so, um, yeah, so it's definitely a really good idea to keep track. So, okay, so these are baby steps. So let's say, for example, you haven't really done this before, thought about this before. So um, let's just say for the sake of argument, um, you are um, 
a policy advisor in an organization. So you're advising the organization on um, uh, public policy developments that impact the organization. And let's say you're doing um, some work for clients where you're helping clients um, understand the implications of policy on their business. But you have in mind that you want to progress through the organization. And so you probably want to become like perhaps a policy director as your next step. Um, and then what you'll be doing is, um, say, for example, so you're working in a consultancy. So as a policy director, you're going to be starting to form relationships with clients and people keep saying to you, you know, you really need to think about raising your profile, but you don't really know what that means. Yeah. So, so let's say the person then starts keeping this email folder of wins or positivity. So they've got this little stash of things that they've done that, they're, that have worked well. So let's say, for example, that the person has worked with a client on a project where they've um, added value to the client on something a client wanted to understand a bit more and they've helped the client understand the government's policy in relation to a particular area and help the client then um, interact with influential people in a way that's um, positive for the client. So they've done a good job. So what kinds of things and could someone at this level who's an advisor wanting to progress to the director level who want, who's being told they need to raise their profile but they don't really know what to do. So what, what could they be doing then to start to raise their profile? Let, let's start maybe internally and then we can think about externally after that. Okay. Um, so internally, um, I mean, I don't know if there would be sort of platforms internally where, where they could like an intranet type thing maybe yeah an intranet yeah. so an, yeah an intranet's a good example so um you know is there somewhere on the internet they can share their knowledge you know can they write some um policy some white papers um, a blog even um anything that kind of showcases their their expertise or their experience you know that would be a yeah an and step. so 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 what would they be writing would it be something like um we achieved this result for this client. This is how the team contributed. This is how I contributed. Like that sort of simple structure, do you think? I think, it, well, I, I don't work in policy, so um, I, I couldn't say um, what you'd expect to see on, on that yeah. side. Of but yeah, I mean, certainly that would be um, almost like a case study, wouldn't it? You know, this is, this is what the client was trying to achieve. And um, this was the outcome. Um, even better if you could get, you know, a bit of a, a nice testimonial from the client that you could, um, that you could, yeah. that you could include, um, you know, even better if it's named saying, you know, Claire or whoever um, really helped with this project, you know, we couldn't have done it without her support, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's really powerful. And how, how, do you advise people on how to get testimonials? Do they just ask the client? Or go, perhaps go through their manager, have a bit of an internal conversation about a good way, but is it really just about remembering to ask the client at an appropriate moment for some feedback yeah i mean to be honest i think for some people that would really be deep, jumping in at the deep end wouldn't it like you know <laughs> i'll ring up anybody and say can i have a testimonial you know um but i completely get why a lot of people would find that quite a frightening thing to do so if you were somebody who would find that frightening it it's maybe something to ask kind of the director if if they could do it yeah at least initially um and actually if you've done a good job it's there are very few people who would say no um to that so yeah if you, yeah. If you have enough of a relationship to, to go and ask and you feel comfortable to do it absolutely go and ask yeah People really really say no and you could just send them an email couldn't you saying you email, we enjoyed just... working with you it's important for us to make sure that our clients are happy with the outcomes that we work with them to achieve it would be really useful to have some feedback because we always want to improve i was just going to say exactly right if you can wrapper it um yeah. in such a way that it you are asking for, for feedback um, and yeah. more generic feedback you know would you rate this would you recommend us to a friend but then with space you know for somebody to kind of um write something nice yeah. um, then then yeah that's definitely a really good way to do it and actually um you know it's just good practice isn't it to, to ask for feedback at the end of a project i mean yeah. tactically i would say ask at a high point you know ask it, you know, <laughs> when things are ask, going well not when yeah, they're all exactly. kind of ask crashing out of control, control. Um, ask when things are going well, ask, um, you know, when you're having some really positive dialogue and ask when things are fresh, you know, like we were saying before, if, it, if you haven't kept a record of, of what you've been doing for, you know, when you ask for a pay rise, it's the same for yeah. clients. They yeah. will forget in sort of three months time how happy they were with, with what you did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely, um, that's definitely one way to do it. I mean, the other way, um, another way, um, 
of sort of getting yourself out there would be um, to share your knowledge. Um, so not necessarily a case study, but if there's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going back into legal talk because obviously that's my, that's my area of expertise, but I don't, I'm assuming there are, there are similar, similar things within, within your field. So say if there's um, a new piece of case law or a new piece of legislation, you know, writing about that or writing about a new way of doing things, um, you're not blowing your own trumpet in the sense that you're saying, you look at me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm brilliant, which some people might feel that a case people perhaps do. You are literally talking about something that you are an expert in. Yeah. But the PR effect of that is people will then start to see you as an expert because, you know, they think, well, if she's writing about it, she obviously knows what she's talking about, but it's a slightly more subtle way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. And so that's, I think that's a really nice way of, of it's a really nice way to dip your toe in mm. doing that sort of, and you are, all you are doing really is sharing the knowledge that you already have. Yeah. So it could also work. I mean, so it, again, just thinking about the example. So in the field of policy, it could also work equally well. So say there's a new policy, right? So the government says, we're going to change our policy on whatever it happens to be, right? How we treat digital providers, how we engage with tech companies. Or it could be anything, any number of policies. Yeah. So if that's your area, so there what you're doing is you're, um, you're, you know that something is changing and it's likely to be of interest to your clients, have an impact on your client's business. So then you would write a short piece. Um, you could do it internally, I guess, as well. And then it would be good for other people in the organization to know if something comes up and it's relevant to this client and then come and speak to you. And then you can push it out externally as well. So let's think about that as well. So whether it's a new piece of legislation coming in, a new piece of government policy, um, something of that nature, and you, you think that it's worth um, going externally with it as well. So how could you go about doing that then? What, what sort of things could you do? Yeah, well, I mean, it's so with, I mean, we're talking now about media relations um, mm -hmm. to a large part, aren't we? So, you know, how can you, um, how can you engage with, with the media? Um, yeah. Well, there are lots of different ways. I mean, you will know there'll be publications that are very relevant to, to, to your area of law and, uh, sorry, to your area of, of practice, sorry. And that will be the same, you know, every, for, for, for most of us that there is a trade, there is at least one um, trade publication. Yeah, the most obvious place to start is is with that is with that trade publication. So the first thing to do is read it. Obviously, you know, get get to grips with it. Have a look at what the regular features are. Um, have a look at you know what what it's covering. Work out who the different journalists are that that, that work there. Understand who the editor is. Um, really basic research. And um, you know, just get to grips with 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 your trade press. Um, and then after that, it's, it's usually as simple uh, as literally getting in touch with the journalist that you think is most likely to be interested in what it is that you know about. Now, there's a couple of things to be, to be conscious of. Um, one is timeliness. You know, you need to be quick. If, if, um, if a news story breaks or if a, a new policy announcement is made, get in there quick. You know, yep. get in touch with that journalist, drop them an email, tweet them, ring them, whatever. Because a lot of journalists are on Twitter, aren't they? So that's quite a good place to, to be. Yeah, I mean, Twitter is very powerful for media relations. And there's actually a hashtag. Um, it's hashtag journo request. Mm -hmm. And journo request is basically a place uh, under this hashtag where, where journalists will ask for people, for experts, for case studies, for people to talk about um, whatever it is that's relevant. yeah so i've seen these so they'll be like looking for someone who knows about data protection looking for or about it there's all manner of things aren't there like looking yeah. for someone who's found love in their 60s or like yeah. any anything that they need to help with the story they're working on yeah and and actually it's if you have i mean i use journal request all the time it's amazing it's amazing it's amazing it's extremely powerful because um you know you've got producers on there from the bbc you've got people from the broadsheets you've got um, all the major news channels um there's no kind of particular rhyme or reason to it you literally just have to keep checking it but i mean you can do um you can look under the hashtag and then obviously you can look under words that are that are relevant to your particular mm. field so you know for me at the minute brexit is massive for one of my clients mm. so journal requests brexit you know it comes yeah. up all the time or yeah and you can subscribe to it as well can't you so you get like a daily sort of feed of all the different requests yeah i mean it's 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 one of those where it's slightly time consuming but actually the the dividends you know if, if you mm. get speaking to um the producer from the bbc and then you know you get on the, on the tv or the radio what they will do is they will keep your they'll keep your details basically you know once you're on the database of the, of, of the bbc um if you've done a good job mm. there's a fair chance that they're going to ring you again in the future um 
so yeah that's that's a really that's a really sensible place to so start you're, yes okay so you're so there's this new area of policy new piece of legislation you've gone to the trouble to understand it you think you could help other people understand it yeah so what do you do and let's say you've got this local you've got your local trade uh, publication that you're familiar with and you read regularly and you yeah. know who the journalists are so you could tweet them or email them and then what would you say like if you want to talk about blah blah I'm happy to help or like what, what's a good way of engaging with journalists because presumably their inboxes are kind of full and they're always working on tight deadlines and things like that. So what's a good way of engaging with them that's most likely to make them think, oh, actually I want to speak to this person. Yeah. So the most important thing is timeliness. You know, if, if you're getting in touch with them half a day after it's happened, you know, it's, sometimes even an hour is too late. You know, okay. you just need to be straight on it. Um, that's the first thing to, to kind of be aware of. Um, if it's a Twitter, if it's a, you know, if it's a journal request on Twitter, then just reply to their journal request. Um, if it's, if it's not, and you're just kind of doing it, um, off, off your own back, then email tends to be the best. Um, and the way I would structure an email is, is literally kind of in the, in the header, you might talk about whatever it is that's, that's broken. So you might just say pitch, um, colon, blah, 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 whatever it is. And um, the reason you put pitch in there is is because you're pitching to them. Basically, you are pitching yourself and your and your yeah. expertise. And then just get straight to the point. You know, top of the email, dear whoever. Um, and underneath that, you know, you might you might be interested in in this that's broken today. Maybe you can include a, a link. Underneath that, you know, a bit about you, a bit about your experience. Don't waffle. Just literally like what your experience is. Maybe who you work for, what you can talk about. Um, if everybody, if you think everybody's kind of going to be going to yeah. be on it think about what's what you can say that might be different or what makes you stand out from the crowd so if everybody's saying um you know nigel farage god um is actually really good <laughs> at this. not a fan but hey let's just leave that aside for a minute you know think what you like of him mm. what he's done really really well without throughout the whole of the sort of brexit process is, is he's stood out because he's said exactly the opposite to what everybody else has said basically and that's i mean yeah whatever you think about him he, he is a pr masterclass um mm. really um so i'm not suggesting be be more nigel be like nigel <laughs> <laughs> just kind of think about where you can perhaps as an individual stand out and actually for for the major organizations particularly the bbc if you are a woman um they at the minute are really really wanting to sort of equalize a little bit more um mm. the sort of expert sources that they have so for once in life if you are a woman getting in touch with the bbc for example uh, you actually stand a pretty good chance because they do want more more female right. commentators which is only a good thing really yeah so um so i think what we're saying here is that if we think about what the journalist is trying to do so they're trying to um attract readers or listeners or watchers onto their yeah. whatever medium they're operating in yeah so um so part of what they want is to inform people so this new thing has happened but presumably there's another bit of it which is so what so and this is kind of what what you're saying so you know if you have a slightly controversial view about it then happy days they'll be yeah. probably more willing to engage with you um but i think even if you don't have a controversial view or you're saying it is worth having a view about what it means so yeah. let's say again going back so there's a new piece of legislation so lawyers perhaps would be comfortable with this is what the legislation says like this is what the change is but people might not necessarily be thinking through what does that mean for my client what does that mean for these sorts of clients what does that mean for this part of the economy so are you advising people to have a bit of a think about the so what before they engage in this uh, conversation with the media yeah I mean you know I, and I think this is where a bit of practice kind of comes in yeah you if you're doing this sort of stuff you have to sort of understand you have to get a bit of an understanding for what is this particular outlet um going to be interested in mm. and how do they typically report on things mm -hmm. so and I mean, I don't get it right all the time. Nobody gets it right all the time. Um, but yeah, have a, have a think about the so what. You you are right. Have a think about it, and not just the so what broadly, but the so what for whatever the mm. the, the publication or the the channel um, that you, that you're trying to that you're trying to pitch to. And also, and this is a really big point. You know, you getting on the BBC for many people is is kind of you know the dream. Um, but even for people who work in PR, you know, and we pitch to, to journalists, you know, 
day after day after day after day you know we get knocked back (laughs) so many times you know it's ridiculous so what I would say is don't kind of do this once to the BBC, not get a response and then never do it again. You know, that's <laughs> not how this works. <laughs> okay. So you just need to, uh, don't take, don't take a lack of response personally, just to understand that everybody's busy and they're all kind of, there are lots of competing priorities. Yeah. So give it a go. Yeah. So, but how often then you don't want to be like stalking people either. So what, how often would you say, what's a reasonable uh you know so say for example someone did have a journalist at the at the bbc who they liked yeah. so there was a health journalist called nick triggle who does a lot of interesting stuff or yeah. you've got uh Bronwyn jeffries who does interesting stuff on education so with someone like that then how many times would you suggest contacting them what's reasonable is it no. you know is it once a week or once a month or daily or no god no no well none of those actually um literally only when there is something extremely relevant to that journalist because that's the other thing about media relations you know i love journalists as a rule they are you know a lot to themselves um if you continually pitch something to a journalist that's not relevant to them they will block you and it'll you just don't want that to happen so yeah it's 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 balancing a fine line between making sure that you're getting in touch when there's something hyper hyper relevant and the rest of the time just leaving well alone um because you know we're all so busy we know what email's like it's hideous sometimes isn't it if you've got somebody who's emailing you daily with stuff that's completely irrelevant you know you are you, no just yeah. don't do that. Um, so you don't thing, want to be spamming people basically. don't do not spam people and also <laughs> i mean the other thing to think about is i think some people think they're going to go and do PR and that they will be on Sky News and they'll be on the BBC. No, it doesn't work like that. What actually, what I tend to find works best, and people can be quite, almost quite snobbish about this, is you start at the bottom, you know, start with your intranet, start with a blog, start talking about, if, you know, if you're, if, if you're wanting to engage externally, um, then, you know, do things on Twitter. Mm-hmm. If you're wanting to engage internally and or externally, use things like LinkedIn and sort of become a bit of an expert before you, you know, before you go external, before you, before you of, angle for the six o'clock news. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, go to trade press, go to kind of regional press, go to uh, the smaller radio stations and the sort of the independent t- TV um, places because, one of the reasons that this is a good thing to do is for SEO Mm -hmm. because a lot of journalists, you know, if you pitch them and you go to them with a good idea, they'll Google you. Of course they will. We all Google everybody, don't we? Or they might check you out on Twitter or they might check you out on LinkedIn and they, or they might do all of those things. Um, And actually if you can show if, if your kind of um, PR trail as it were is there, you know, if you leave um, almost like PR breadcrumbs, so, you know, you've (laughs) talked about this topic on, um, on LinkedIn, if you've blogged about it, if you've tweeted about it, then actually you're um, you have real cred- you have credibility there. Whereas yeah. if you if nobody's ever heard of you and they're like, well, who is this muppet? You know that no offense. Um, you know that it, it's no quite hard. <laughs> it's quite hard for a journalist to justify kind of yeah. taking the next steps with you. If that makes yeah, sense, absolutely. So, you know, okay, so I like yeah. this idea about building it up, building it yeah, up, definitely. and I think that's probably less scary for people as well. So I think sometimes people can be a bit afraid of journalists and they can sometimes feel that once you start a conversation with a journalist, things can spiral out of control very quickly. So, so for example, I remember when I was working in the public sector, we once published a report on something and it was all about the fact that lots of walk-in centers, which are, you know, places you can go for urgent care whenever your uh, GP is, isn't open. Mm -hmm. Uh, walk-in centres were being closed across the country. Now, lots of the press picked up on this immediately because they were interested in whether the government was reducing spend on NHS-funded services and so was quietly closing services down. And so that is potentially quite a big story. So they were all really interested in having a conversation. And so that topic had suddenly became very political and we weren't a political organization. We were an independent organization that had gathered evidence from across the country to understand what was happening. And I remember having to be a little bit careful there about not getting drawn into the political 
sort of conversation. So I didn't want to be, I was on actually, as it happens, a Today program and on, on TV, like GMTV or something. And I had to be really careful not to get drawn into criticizing the government for closing NHS facilities, because that's like quite a big story that people yeah. get excited about. So we, we had to be a bit careful. And part of that was we had a good comms team and they were able to help me understand that this is a spin on this story, potentially just be aware that that's where it could go. So mm -hmm. just be careful not to fall into this trap and just bring it back to this is the work that we've done. This is what we think it says. Yeah. So if people are a bit fearful about getting into a conversation with a journalist that can then sort of go off in this funny direction um what advice do you have do you, are you saying that it's a good idea to work with people like yourself because i have my comms guy who's amazing mm. do you think that you know if you're um if you are actually successful in an exchange with a national press it's worth getting help from someone like you or what what would your advice to people be in that situation because it can sometimes go a bit crazy yeah i mean that sort of if I'm honest, that sort of situation, um, that sounds like the journalists are coming to you. Um, yeah. you know, they, they know what their story is. They know what they're trying to get out of you. And that yeah. can be quite, um, quite a daunting position to be in, I think. Yeah. And certainly, you know, no, that's kind of the flip side of, of the sort of PR that, that, that I'm talking about. It's still PR. Um, yeah. But I think it's very, very easy to be caught on the back foot in that sort of situation. Yeah. I think anybody, um, at any, a, anybody at that level of an organisation that the press are coming to should a be media trained. Um, yeah. And media training is is basically where you do a, a course, usually with a with a with an ex journalist, usually with a camera person, a camera yeah. technician, uh, where you will be very much put under yeah. the <laughs> yeah yeah put in the put, put in the hot seat put through start. your paces. Yes, and actually we yeah. have all been media trained, and it was yeah. very helpful. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I. I I think any yeah anybody in that situation a needs to be media trained b needs to have access to a really decent comms team who can brief you and who can basically yeah. pull you apart um, yeah. in, in the comfort of your of your own office yeah um and and if 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 you ever if you ever find yourself in that situation then then no you, you no I, I wouldn't recommend that you ever kind of deal with the media yeah by yourself in in that situation because um you're just out of your depth, I guess. Yeah, you, most people so would risk it. Yeah, hugely risky. For you know the reputational damage of 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 saying yes to those those sorts of they're not even opportunities. Those sorts of interviews, um, unless you are very well briefed and very well prepped, is um, yeah the the risk to your organisation or to your business. It, it's it's no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're, so so our scenario that we were talking about then is you you have something that you want to say you're yeah. keen to raise your profile you reach out to journalists they respond to you and say yes okay yeah um, but I'm I'm guessing even there you can say you know have in mind the sorts of things you'd like to talk about and it's fine to say to a journalist I can't comment on that or I don't have a view on that or so you don't need to once you've opened up that dialogue you don't need to feel that you have to you can then talk about anything you can still just limit your conversation to the thing that you offered to talk to them about. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think, I think it's important, really important actually to, to stress that um, the situation you were talking about where you've got an aggressive, potentially aggressive situation, um, quite a volatile situation with a journalist that is, it's so different from a situation where you have some insight um, that you can give to a journalist uh, on a breaking story or a, a trend or whatever it is, because, you know, with the first situation, you are on the back foot. It's probably going to be quite aggressive. Um, there's, you, there's a good chance you're going to be tripped up. Actually, you know, with, with the, with the, where you've proactively pitched yourself in or where a journalist has come to you, you know, that's, it's, it's so different. A journalist isn't trying to trip you up. A journalist isn't trying to get this information out of you um, that you don't want to give you know, you have something useful. So actually the cards are all in, you, you hold all the cards. Um, yeah. I mean, the journalist, there's no reason that a journalist would ever really be aggressive with you or try to get you to talk about something that's, yeah. that's not relevant because you are, you are an expert, you are a thought leader and yeah. they've come to you because they want your expertise. So, so you're helping them do a good job in yeah. a way by giving them access to yeah. insights that they wouldn't otherwise have. Yeah. And I think actually, I think it's really important to make this point that, um, you know, the, people can think that journalists are awful and they're terrible and you know 
if people think that the only time that journalists come to you is in that first very aggressive scenario, mm. then that's it's just not that's just not that's just not right. Um, mm. And and I think perhaps that that's why some people are so frightened of doing media mm. stuff because they mm. do think, well, you know, I've seen how Jeremy Paxton talks to people. Well, that's you know, he talks <laughs> to people like that because you know that's that's if they're a politician, it's their job. They're up for that, yeah. Yeah. yeah or you know if they are the chairman of a multinational company who's been doing something dodgy and mm. they've been caught you know they have to take the, the heat for that yeah but that's not what that's not really what we're talking about tonight for the majority of us mm. we're talking about proactive positive media coverage that showcases your expertise yeah okay and do you think it's worth um reaching out to journalists to say you know um, uh, I've been doing a lot of work in this area. You know, if you'd like to talk, have a general chat, you know, let me know if you'd like to meet for coffee or something like that. Do you think they do that? Or are they always under pressure to just do the story and then uh, engage with people as a sort of as and when basis? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I mean, it depends on the journalist, depends on the publication, it depends on who you are, who you work for. Um, mm. You know, there's always going to be some organisations, the bigger organisations, the ones with the real success stories that, you know, journalists will make time to to speak to. Um, yeah. for, for the majority of us, having a coffee with a journalist, if it's a trade journalist and, you know, you're very relevant to the sort of stuff they would cover, yes, they might do. Uh, if it's someone from the BBC, probably not. Yeah. Um, if it's somebody from one of the nationals, again, perhaps not. Um, it, it depends, it depends. And you know again you unfortunately there's no right or wrong answer um yeah. you need to try and build those relationships yeah and i can't really stress that enough you know in the day journalists are humans um you know if you can give them something at, at really short notice that no one else can help them with then in a way they really owe you a favor um yeah. so you know work it not not in a rude way but you know if there are you know ask them you know will you keep me on record you know can I get in touch with things about this in the future you know they'll either say yes or they'll ignore you and I mean if they ignore you who cares just who cares yeah, yeah exactly who cares yeah. but again if something relevant does come up and they have ignored you will send it anyway if it's, yeah. you know, if it's not spam yeah um, and the other thing as well is what one more thing is um journalists love stories you know that's what a journalist does they they yeah create stories don't they um they tell us things they make us um they make us angry or they make us excited or they engage with us you know their their job really is is about engaging with people and and, and one of the ways they do this is by weaving stories and there's no reason why we can't create our own stories and i'm not just talking about the media here again i'm talking about kind of pring ourselves so you know, think about what, for, for people who are thinking maybe they should do a little bit of, of, of sort of PR to kind of promote themselves. I think sometimes it can be really helpful to think about what your story is. And that can be things like, you know, where, you, where have you come from? Um, what have you achieved? What have you kind of overcome? Mm. You know, what's your journey been? Um, yeah. You know, why, why are you different? Things like that. And I think if you really can identify them, particularly for, you know, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't had an easy start or if you've had to work hard, you know, all of us have mm. kind of things in our lives where we've, we've had to work hard to overcome things and we all have things that we can be proud of. And I think, I think sometimes if you can work out what those things are and how you can use them to your advantage and how they've helped you, then actually that's really powerful. You know, you're kind of owning your own narrative. Yeah. Um, and without meaning to sound kind of wishy-washy, um, cause that's not what I'm trying to do at all. I think, the people who are the best storytellers, the people who are the most engaging are very self-aware. You know, they know what their strengths are. Um, they know what their negative points are. Um, and they know how kind of how to, how to sell it, how to bring people along mm. um, and how to engage with people. So I, I do think that's something that is something to consider. Yeah. So that could be a little takeaway then for people watching. It could be to go away and think about how you tell your story. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so we, all, we have so many opportunities to do it, don't we? We, we meet new people all the time. We're at networking things. There are so many opportunities when people say, you know, and, you know, some version of the question, tell me about yourself, you know, and to have that story, to be able to say, this is my story, is really powerful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a really good thing. So that'd be a good takeaway. So just... Um, if people are watching and they have some questions, then just uh, put them in the comments and we will answer them. 
So, um, you, so, okay. So we talked about, you've decided to do your external PR. We've talked about engaging with the media. Can we talk a little bit about LinkedIn? Because you mentioned LinkedIn and you, you, you said that that's important. So how can you use LinkedIn as a force for good external PR for yourself or your team? Uh, ex external PR. Uh, so with external PR, I'm, I'm thinking, are you thinking more kind of um, people who run their own businesses? Is that what you mean? Well, I just meant more so, um, you know, you can post things on LinkedIn that raise your profile. Yeah. So what's a good way to do that? So with a journalist, what we've said is keep an eye, know your area of expertise, keep an yeah. eye on journal requests, uh, follow the trade press, et cetera, to see what um, people are interested in and then approach them proactively to say, look, if you need some help with this, I know about it in a pitch, yeah. that sort of thing. But then also, uh, presumably, you could use LinkedIn on an ongoing basis just to raise your profile. That's what I mean by external PR. Just to, So reaching out to people outside your organization to help them understand your area of expertise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, things you can do on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn likes it when you publish things. Um, so there's the sort of the, 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 the ability to publish things that can be, um, you know, something kind of more long-winded or it might just literally be kind of um something on your own profile um so again have an opinion i suppose is always is always key yeah. um, think about what your area of expertise is um think about what your kind of angle is um can you say something again that people maybe aren't saying or can you say something in a way that's slightly different to what everybody is saying um that's always that's always a good thing to do one one really good way to kind of drive engagement if that's what you're trying to do um i so you know get more views get comments and um, get likes and um the other emoticons that you can now use on on linkedin is to tag people mm -hmm. so you know you might say um i don't know have you seen this um this this change announced by the government today um i think it's you know really positive for these reasons and then underneath that you might say um tag a load of people and say you know i'd be really interested to know what you think mm. and, you know if one of them comments then somebody else will comment and that's yeah, a good way yeah. of really getting a bit of a conversation going there and the benefit of that is of course um whoever you've tagged if if they then reply um mm. then obviously their audiences yeah people they're connected to obviously see see yeah. you um so that's one really good way of, of sort of raising your profile um commenting on other people's posts you know people who are kind of in your field again opens you and your profile up to um up to a load of a load of other new audiences potentially um but just some basic things on on linkedin actually i mean i don't know if how basic you want me to go but um with your linkedin profile try to get to the all-star uh the, the all-star status which yeah. is have a decent picture have a biography have your kind of um recent uh sort of uh, career information uh, and you know be, just engage with people um yeah. what else do i suggest on there um in terms of the sorts of things that people can can talk about um it doesn't have to be all work you know you can talk about things that have have interested you um some people uh use linkedin a bit more like how people used to use Facebook um, and I think how personal you want to go kind of probably depends on your job, but also your personality. Yeah. Um, the other thing to think about is um, being a micro influencer, you know, if you have a real, so I have a real niche, obviously I do PR for boutique law firms. So am I a micro influencer? It's a bit like being an entrepreneur, isn't it? You, you never describe yourself as being an entrepreneur. You never describe yourself as being a, a micro influencer, but you know, in reality, most of the people I'm connected with probably run or are associated with boutique law firms. So, you know, if you have a niche um, or a particular specialism, then, you know, the more you talk about it, the more you'll become associated with that. And actually that's really powerful as well, because mm. if you're building, uh, if you're building a business, for example, or if you uh, work in, if you have a particular area and you, you know, you only want to go after certain people. So you might want to go after, you know, kind of high net worth individuals who are, who are getting divorced. If you have a niche and if, you know, if you keep talking about this niche, this niche, this niche, and you can become known for that, then actually when people have referrals, when people know those people that, you know, you talk about helping all the time, then you're going to be front of mind yeah. and they're going to send them to you. It doesn't matter if they don't know if you're any good or not. What they yeah. know is that that's an area you specialize. They associate you with that area. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's really powerful again. Mm. Um, 
and actually that's not just you know that's not just for people who who run businesses but you know say if if you are looking to make the next step in your career and you and you want to move up a level if you've mm. got this niche if you've got this expertise then you're going to be of interest to you know whoever it is that's, that's yeah. that area because so, then yeah what you do so loads of recruiters use LinkedIn, don't they? Yeah, loads. So it's a really good opportunity to think about, you know, if you are planning on progressing in your career, yeah. again, if you've put some insightful things on there on a particular topic, if you're willing to engage them and a recruiter is looking at your profile, they can be like, okay, these are all the things that this person's done. And we can see that they're interested and they're interesting because they're posting about it on LinkedIn. So it really helps with career progression just at its most basic level with recruiters. Yeah, but I mean, not even just recruiters, um, you know, with, with anybody that's, that's kind of looking for that particular thing that you, um, mm-hmm. that you specialize in. And again, it comes down to that thing that I was talking about before when, you know, a journalist might Google you and will look at your kind of SEO record. It's, it's the same for people it's the same for recruiters. It's the same for um, people who are looking for somebody in this um, particular expertise. It's having, it's basically getting, uh, it's using these channels to get things out there um, almost as, as breadcrumbs or as pointers um, to sort of um, showcase, to showcase your, your expertise in essence. Um, and just quickly on LinkedIn as well, um, you can obviously use hashtags um, within LinkedIn, which again can be very powerful because people can search against, um, people can search against them in essence. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's always worth kind of looking at what the hashtags are for your kind of particular area of, of expertise. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So I love the idea of little PR breadcrumbs, like just <laughs> leaving a little trail. It's like Hansel and Gretel, isn't it? And then you end up you end up somewhere nice, hopefully, at the end of it. Yeah. No, that's really good. So uh, let me just see. So we don't have any questions just at the moment. That's fine. If people watch the video later and they have questions, they can. You're in the group, aren't you? So they can just pop yeah. them in the in the comments box, and then um, we can uh, reply to them later. So um, just in terms of finishing up, then. So um, I feel I'm putting you on the spot a little bit now. But do you have? I'm sure because you said so many helpful and interesting things, it will be fine. Do you? What are your three main takeaways for people? who haven't done any PR to date, but have a sense that it would be a good thing to start doing. What are your three things that you would recommend people do to get started um, on doing PR constructively? Okay, so the first one is um, think about your objective. You know, it's all very well and going, good and going, I need to go and do some PR. But, yeah. you know, actually... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what, what are you actually trying to achieve and when do you want to achieve it by? You know, yeah. it's a really basic thing, isn't it? But I mean, just totally going on a bit of a left field. Um, you know, even even now I've been doing PR for like, what, 10 years. Um, we <laughs> All of us practitioners even now get kind of carried away with the tactics. You know, oh, we could do this. It'd be so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And actually, you know, we always have to say to ourselves, right, come on. What's the objective? What are we trying to achieve? So what's the objective, first of all, you know, and, and by when? And then we have to think about what the strategy is. And obviously the, um, the strategy is underpinned by the tactics and it's the tactics that are basically just what we, what we do. So that would be my first step. What's your objective? What's your strategy? And, and what's the tactics you're going to employ? So could your, could your uh, objective be something like, I want to be more known as the person who knows about X, Y, and Z so that clients come to me in the future? Like, would that kind of objective be okay? So that's probably more going to be your strategy. Okay. Your objective might be, um, okay, so I want to move from being um, a policy... Advisor, yeah, policy policy advisor advisor to policy director. Within 12 months, say. Okay. That's your objective because you can... It's very clear and it's measurable. Yeah. You're either going to do it or you're not, right? Yeah. Um, And then so your strategy is, right, how am I going to do this? So your strategy might be, okay, um, I'm going to do this by becoming a thought leader in... What, what would the area be, for example? Oh, um, 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 <clears throat> privacy, okay. uh, yeah, privacy issues. Okay, so, uh, so your, your objective is I'm going to be, I'm going to move to director level within 12 months. Your strategy is I'm going to do that by becoming a thought leader in, um, in privacy. Like data privacy, yeah, data exactly. Privacy. Yeah, yeah. So then you would go, okay, well, what are the tactics I'm going to employ? Um, well, those tactics might be, uh, okay, so I'm going to set up a, a LinkedIn account and I'm going to talk about um, data privacy. Um, I'm going to set up a blog. I'm going to blog, um, you know, about these sorts of issues. Um, 
I'm going to use um, Twitter. I'm going to keep an eye on um, kind of journal requests. I'm going to pitch myself in anytime these, um, you know, these journal requests come through and they're relevant. I'm going to identify, you know, what the top three publications um, in the UK for, for that area are. And I'm going to, you know, reach out to um, one of the journalists at, at, at each, um, you know, within say six weeks or something. Um, yeah. So, you know, you're looking at lots of different things that you can do within your strategy, which will then help you to um, deliver against your objective. That's my top tip. We do that with all clients. Um, right. And it's a recognized kind of way of delivering. So objective strategy tactics. Objective, yeah, objective strategy tactics. That's tip one. And actually, if you go and do that, then you're going to be really good at PR. <laughs> Basically. <Yeah. laughs> um, step two is going to be... Um, what's my what's my um, what's my tip two going to be oh i know um what do we call it um swipe and deploy <laughs> right <laughs> i quite like swipe and deploy so basically find somebody else in your field that you really look up to you really admire they might be a mentor it might just be someone that you know you have a total girl crush on like um i'm a bit i've always always been a bit obsessed with um sheree booth i always just thought okay <laughs> amazing <Yeah. laughs> um and and lady hale i quite like lady hale as well anyway i digress um the point being you know if there's somebody in your field it doesn't matter if they're female or male or whatever but you just think actually yeah you know they're really on the ball with their own kind of personal brand and, and pr and just kind of don't stalk them um but you know look at what they're what they're doing look at how they kind of conduct themselves what are the yeah. things that they do and literally swipe and deploy so you know oh that's a good idea right? i'm going to use that within you know my own um within my own strategy um because most of the time if somebody else is doing it and it's working for them mm. you know we don't need Make to reinvent work the wheel. for you yeah, yeah excellent exactly. i love that exactly. yeah so yeah swipe and deploy and then my third tip and I, I mean i don't know i might be talking in in kind of generalizations here but right at the very start you know we talked about um the fear people have the fear and you know i call it the fear um other people call it imposter syndrome you know, we all have it sometimes, don't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Um, I think if you can, if, if you are, if you are somebody who kind of recognizes that perhaps, you know, they could be doing more in their career and they, they could earn more or whatever it is that's making you watch this, this session now, you know, yeah. you obviously think probably that you need to make a change. Um, and whatever the reasons behind that, behind that, you know, that decision, that reason, that reasoning for, for making a change, if there is an element of imposter syndrome, I would literally just go away and have a think about what you've achieved. Yeah. You know, what, what have you achieved? You know, you, if you are, if you are, you're in this group, you know, you're obviously here for a reason and um, you're probably very successful. Um, have a, you know, go and have a think about what you've actually achieved next time you think, you know, next time you feel like, Oh, I can't do that. Or, or whatever because mm. actually it's probably more yeah than you realize look at your folder of positivity with all yeah. the feedback saying thank you so much that was great yeah. and all that yeah yeah and yeah. just give yourself a pat on the back and then just go actually do you know what excuse my french fuck it i'm gonna do it and just do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's my i love statement. that i it. love that and i like the way like so you know you don't have to wait until that feeling goes away before you start doing yeah. things it's fine to feel like that and just go ahead and take baby steps anyway just, just keep own it. yourself forward yeah just own it you know know that we've all all of us have had to start somewhere you know i yeah. can be here all all pr -y, um and you know you know oh, pr yeah blah 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 but you know i've just fallen i haven't fallen into a job you know i'm i'm in, in a job that you know plays to my strengths um and it just happens to be pr it's not that i think i'm ace or you know that i you know it, it's it's not that it's not arrogance it's none of those yeah. things just um, so anybody that is feeling that i would just say you know don't don't worry that putting yourself out there is is arrogant it's not all you are doing all you are doing is talking about the things that you are really good at yeah you know if you're doing this stuff as a job it's because you're good at it so yeah you know, Crack talk about on. being good at it. It's fine. Excellent. I love it. Okay. And then if people want to get in touch with you, Vicky, what's the best way? You're on Facebook, aren't you? Is that a good way to connect with you? Or do you have an email address that people should use? Yeah. So to be honest, um, 
the Facebook that I use um, is, is, is kind of my, um, I kind of hide a little bit um, on Facebook, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I'm quite hard to find on there. So the, the best way to get in touch with me is um, on LinkedIn, where it's, uh, I'm under Victoria Moffat, which okay. is M-O-F-F-A-T-T, uh, slightly unusual spelling. Um, I'm on Twitter, um, at Vic Moffat. Um, and, and yeah, or, um, or go to my website, which is um, Lexrex, L E. L-E-X-R-E-X communications.com. Um, yeah. Great. Right. Lots of ways to contact you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You'd expect so- me to be very contactable, yeah, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, that's all good. Look, thank you so, so much for your time and all of your wisdom. It's been amazing. Um, incredibly helpful. Um, and um, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, let's stay in touch. Yeah. No, thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Great. Okay. okay. Thanks.